Everyday amazing with Sky Alton. Everyday amazing. Everyday amazing with Sky Alton. Everyday amazing. Everyday amazing with Sky Alton. Hello, welcome to another episode of Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. Today I have a very special guest for you guys. As always, I try to bring you some of the hottest people coming out of Sacramento. And today I have a very, very special person. I got DJ Soup in the house, man. Let's give it up for DJ Soup. Thank you, thank you. What's going right, on? Right? How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Um, thank you for, you know, for one, for coming on the show and uh, Absolutely. You know, giving me your time. But um, first off, man, I want to talk about how did you get into DJing? Well, you know, I started at this quaint little spot. It's called Access Sacramento. Really? Okay. Yeah, I on T Street. I, I think I know it. I think you think I know you know it. that spot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's a little underground spot, you know, <laughs> but it's kind of overground at the same time, you know. <laughs> um, but no, I was, uh, I was going to Kennedy High School, um, graduated in 1994. And, you know, I was a pretty, I guess you could say gifted student. So I had finished a lot of classes real early. So I had all this spare, you know, space to add another class. So I uh, was looking in the ROP program, regional mm -hmm. occupation program, found TV and radio production. So I went ahead and took the TV radio production class, came in here with Mr. John Webb, I think his name was. So we came in the studio and we were walking past a radio station. I, and I didn't know it was a radio station at mm -hmm. first. I saw a Technique 1200 turntable on the tour, right? So I kind of did a moonwalk and I looked and I said, hey, I'm gonna be the audio engineer. You just call me on Fridays when we do the show and I'll come in there. And uh, Carpenter, Mr. Carpenter, took me under his wing and uh, man, the rest was history. Okay, so when you seen them turntables, did you know did you, th did you know you wanted to do DJ or did you just be like, listen, I think I want to be on the radio? You know, I was drawn to it. I don't even know they how spoke to you. or why. Yeah, they just spoke to me. It's like they're calling me, they're calling <laughs> me, you know. Um, so, yeah, I just I saw the turntables. I knew it had something to do with music because I remember my dad's old turntables and I used to play music, you know, for all the kids in the neighborhood, you know, when I was a youngster. So I'd open the doors, play some basketball, girls would be walking down the street. So they'd stop and sit on the lawn. All the homies from the neighborhood, they would come, we'd be playing basketball and I'd be playing music off the Sanyo turntables that my dad had. So I was kind of already like a fish in water once I got into that studio. I, I was just going to say that. See, mm -hmm. So it sounds like it was in your blood. If you, you know, your Probably. dad was already, yeah, yeah, yeah might, I think so. Been there. Uh -huh. Okay, so from from there, um, you he took you under his wing, mm -hmm. and describe to me your your first like performance in front of a crowd. What was that like? Okay, so again, going to school, you know, Kennedy High School for those from Sacramento, South Sacramento, that's in Greenhaven, right? right. So. A majority of the kids had some large houses out there. I think Eddie Murphy's girlfriend was yeah. out there or something like that, right? So this girl, she came up to me, and it was like one of them old school Saturday morning specials. Like, can you do my year end party for the seniors? And I was like, yeah, I think I could do that. <laughs> but on the inside, I was like, yes, I'm gonna ask her out, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah, I can do that for you. So, I ain't gonna man, do charge you. You know, you know you. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, so we came there, you know, got my friend had the speakers. I had been collecting records because I was at the studio, at the mm -hmm. station, collecting records. So we get there, right? Nobody set up, right? People had, you know, decorations and balloons not blown up, and they were just all watching the TV. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why is everybody watching TV not all set up? So I, you know, wedge my way through the crowd, and I see on the TV this white Bronco going down the street with a bunch of cop cars going behind it. So wow. that was the date of my first gig when O.J. Simpson was running from the police. But yeah, senior wow. year in high school. Yeah, never forget it. <laughs> How could you? You know, I mean, that's historic right there. Exactly. Um, question. So, did, you know, from that, did you did you get to to actually play or whatever, or did the O.J. You know, driving down, running away from we the We did get to play. You know, I don't even remember everything 
I had all my records like in this big backpack, right? So I didn't have a lot of music at the time, but everybody was having a good time. I did get a chance to actually play after everybody decided, okay, that's over. Let's go ahead and do it. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy, man. <laughs> Um, man, something that that kind of came to mind as you're as you're you know talking about that is like, how would you define uh, your job and describe like the influence of a DJ? Man, DJing can go in so many different directions. You know, I mean, everything from public speaking and you know learning how to you know work with the crowd and having like different types of. Um, you know, people interacting with you. I mean, it, you could do so many things on radio, on doing concerts, you can DJ for an artist, you know. And I would think that, you know, as a DJ, I think my main job is really to just give people a good time, mm. you know. Um, it's more of a service-oriented performance thing than your traditional singer or rapper or vocal performer, instrumentalist, where a lot of times I find working with them, they're kind of playing for themselves. And if the crowd likes it, those are your fans and that's what it is. But right. as a DJ, you have to think and find that balance between what things that you like versus what you anticipate what right. you think other people might like. And you just gotta always have that balance, you know, th throughout like a DJ career. So what's that, that process like when it comes to getting ready for a, a, um, a DJ performance? Like, what, like how do you choose a, a set list? How do you pick your tracks? Um, like what's that process like for you? Well, I'll say this, it's a lot harder now <laughs> than it was back in the 90s when I started, right? And I probably DJ at least as much, if not more, than I did back then. Um, you know, back in the day, I think everybody was on the same analog wavelength, you know? So you got the difference between analog and digital. Now we're in this digital age, you know, where I can carry, you know, 10,000 MP3s on right. my laptop, right? But back then, we had three to four record crates at the most. And it was a process of not only knowing what was hot, but knowing what could be hot. And right. so that's a combination of, you know, paying attention to, you know, the artists that are out at the time, you know, whoever's current, and being able to have that that sauce to be able to bring something back that people kind of forgot about and didn't realize that they still love, you know. Um, but now it's a very tedious process. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, I got an SD card that is dumping about 30,000 files as we speak at the house. Wow. And it's just crazy because I'm deleting stuff or I'm backing up stuff to Dropbox because just in case this laptop doesn't work, you know, I can go pop in another one or DJ from my phone now, you know. Um, but it's a, it's a long process because you have to think about genres. So you got your seven or eight basic club genres, you know, from hip hop, R&B, you know, Afro beats, you've got Latin country, and then you have to do, you know, sub divisions of those genres, you know. Right. So just in Latin, you've got cumbia, bachata, salsa, merengue, you know, and then like you got to remember the difference if you're DJing for, you know, Latinos in the West versus in the East Coast. So it's it's a lot of work and it's a daily thing. Right. I mean, yeah. just from you describing that, man, it's 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 very it's very complex. Absolutely. It's almost like a Rubik's Cube, but there's a puzzle within the puzzle, right? Because like Absolutely. you said, there's a lot of stuff that you got to think about, which I have never thought about. Like, you know, I've always just been the audience, right? Mm -hmm. So I've never really given it much thought to like what you guys go through just to make us enjoy but ourselves. You got to use the resources around right? There's a lot of DJ groups, right? There's a lot of people who actually help. YouTube, please get on YouTube. Anything you want to learn, you know, it's not like being in school and is this authoritative source? Is this an APA formatted? You know, right. you don't got to worry about none of that. People online, especially on YouTube, they're there to help. Right. So if you're looking for, you know, a brand new DJ system and you're kind of new at the game or if you've been DJing for years and you're looking to upgrade, literally, that's a daily thing for me. Finding resources, like minded people, mm -hmm. you know, from forums online, you know, contacting 
companies directly, you know, whether it be the software companies or the hardware companies, there's a lot of resources. There's even places that will actually help you put your playlist together, you know, so we'll get together and have like a, a digital Zoom powwow and we'll be like, hey, we're making like the hottest country playlist ever and everybody's going to contribute like one of their favorites. And it actually becomes a very comprehensive, you know, playlist of like 50 to 100 songs that you can play and it'll work very good all over the nation, no matter what region you're in. So how do you, what's your process like? Like, how do you choose what two tracks go together? Like, you know, it, I, that has always been, to me, like being an audience, like... Kind of a mystery. Yeah, yeah. mystery, right? Because, I mean, <laughs> yeah. when they get it right, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's right. And, and, and very rarely have I felt like they've gotten it, you know, completely wrong. Because I feel like normally they, they get it right and then everyone keeps moving and stuff like that. The only occasion I think I've been in a place where you're feeling it and mm -hmm. then they change the song and it changes the whole vibe and everyone kind of like dies out. And We call that a train wreck. <laughs> That's what we call those. When you clear the dance floor and obviously it's up to the DJ to hurry up and get them back right. in the mix, right? But there's a couple of things I look at. So you look at speed. That's one of the primary things. BPM, beats per minute. So back in the day, we used to count, you know, beats per minute. And you don't got to count for a full minute. You can count for 15 seconds, multiply right. it by four, count for 30 seconds, multiply it by two. Um, and then we get those little round stickers. You can get them at like Rite Aid. And then you write the beats per minute per, you know, that particular record. So you've got what KRS-One would call the boom bap. And that's how you count. Okay. Boom, clap, boom, clap. So that's one, two, three, four. You know, so you would count that for the duration of, you know, a minute. You would put that little circle, a little sticker, and write on with a Sharpie on your record. And then I would organize my records in BPM order from slowest to fastest or vice versa. Right. Um, and then you would start getting into key signatures. So if you've got a song that's in C sharp, mm -hmm. you want to find another song that is also in C sharp, but not necessarily just that key. It could be a complementary key. Right. So in a circle of fifths, C sharp minor, F sharp minor, they both sound good together. So you can mix those two records as right. well and kind of get the same effect. And the better a DJ is able to match those different keys and those BPMs, the better it sounds. And sometimes, as you say, that's kind of the mystery. And it's a good mystery if the audience doesn't really know why does this sandwich of songs sound so good together? <laughs> right. That's why, because they find the harmony that, you know, say a musician would have when they're playing one chord and going to another chord and then bringing it back, creating the tension and then it resolving. That's the same thing in DJ. And some DJs don't use that. Right. And you can kind of tell, you know, it's like, why am I not really vibing? And part of it is because there are songs that may not be so harmonious together, you know, when it comes to music theory. DJ should know a little bit of music theory in order to make their music sound right. I, I, I like how you described all that because I, I feel like I've experienced both, right? I've experienced mm -hmm. a DJ who knows music theory mm -hmm. and is, is looking for that, that boom, you know, that, that clap. That sweet spot. That, that mm -hmm. sweet spot, you mm -hmm. know? And then I've been in places where I feel like the DJ is just playing like what's popular. Yeah. You know, and sometimes the songs don't necessarily go together because what's popular can be like different moods, you know? Right. And so it's like, I was in a dancing mood and now you just played this song and it's like, I enjoy this song, but kind of like when I'm driving, not when I'm dancing or when I want to dance. Right. That you happens know? all the time. Yeah. It's, it's about energy and that's probably the third part of it. Now, I say that also because in the tools that DJs use, you already see them with their laptops up or you see a digital screen on their DJ mixer they actually will apply automatically to the songs that you have the BPM. So mm -hmm. it'll analyze the songs when you import them into the software. So it can analyze energy, it can analyze speed, it can analyze even the key. And then it color codes the songs that sound good together based on the key. So if you have two songs that are highlighted in green, Per the computer, computers aren't perfect, right, right. but you also have to use your ear. That's the fourth major piece. You gotta listen and analyze and listen to stuff again to 
okay, yeah, this sounds good together. It's making me feel good. If it makes you feel good, there's at least one other person on this 8 billion person planet that feels good to it too. And that's how you kind of do that. I, I, I like that. Um, so then that kind of ties into one of my other questions. I was going to ask you technology, right? Like you just described like something that uh, like uh, um, technology, how it's helping mm -hmm. people pick tracks together. Right. How has your setup changed over the years as far as like technology wise, um, like what did, what did you start with? Like what was your first? Well, I started with your standard two turntables and a mixer. So I had my first, it was interesting. When I was young, <laughs> I got a gold Visa credit card. Okay. You know, everybody started with an 800, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I had this credit card and there was this place off of Fulton Boulevard, I think it was called K&K um, &K Music, right? So. One of my good friends, he was DJing and he was like, man, you got to get Technique 1200. That's what every DJ get. And I'm so thankful that he was in my life at the time. Um, so we went to K&K &K Music and I was like, these ones right here? He's like, yes, Technique 1200 Mark II. So I bought two of those mm. and I bought a mixer. It was a Stanton Vestax mixer. Vestax became a pretty big uh, DJ mixer in the DJ community because it was focused on DJs that like to cut and scratch. So mm. at the time, Stanton, I believe, was an older company. So they were sponsoring Vestax. So I saw that on the shelf. It was gold. And I went ahead and grabbed that. And that's kind of how I started. And then I had a bunch of records. Now, you know, records. 12 by 12, right? And usually we bought the singles, right? So that took up a lot of space. If your average event, you know, you got like 80, you know, 60 to 80 songs per event. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is that's gonna take up a lot of room in your crates. And then you wanna have those maybe songs. So again, I had three crates of records. So as time went on, I'd say around the 2000s, there are DJs that were using software you know, uh, from CDs to computers. Right, right, right. I was even DJing with music videos for a period of time, you really? know. Really? Yeah, you can actually plug right into a flat screen, run a HDMI cable, and you can spin the music videos to the popular songs. So it got to the point where things started to shrink down as far as the hardware, mm -hmm. but now, again, because people have this expectation, oh man, play this song, it's on YouTube, look at my phone, just plug my ox in. Right, right. That becomes a bit of a problem, you know, because uh -huh. now people expect you to be tied into the matrix and be able to access every song ever known to man <laughs> and my cousin's version. <laughs> right, right, right. You know? I, I, I can imagine, I'm not gonna lie, I've been that guy. I went up to the <laughs> DJ, like, hey man, like, can I get you to play this song, you know? Here, like, here, right. here, here. <laughs> you know, and, and so I, I can see how, you know, yeah, that, that, that can be a lot. That yeah, can, that yeah. Can, that could be a lot. Um, but it's all fun. It's, uh, it's about trying to stump the DJ, so I look at it as a challenge, <laughs> a welcome challenge. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, man, something I, I, I got to ask, and I, I feel like, you know, um, this is something everybody wants to know. How did, how, does it, how did you come up with your DJ name, and, you know, how, like, how important is the DJ name? Uh, yeah, that's a that's a great story. It's a short story, but it's a great story. So I'm like, I want to say in second grade, maybe. Um, now, my birth name is Marcel. So everybody knew me as Marcel. So we're doing this uh, health portion of the class, you know, before science, they called it health, right? Mm -hmm. So we are talking about pouch bearing mammals, marsupials. So one of my friends in the back was Marcel, marsupial. Marsupial sounds like Marcel, Marcel sounds like marsupial, marsupial sale. So that stuck. <laughs> I even opened a record store on K Street around 2003 and it was right next to the Crest Theater and I called it Marsupial Records. But I went back to my old high school because we were doing a fundraiser and they had spelled marsupial welcome back, M-A-R-S-U-P-I-O. Like, like, what are you teaching these kids? Right, like, right? Who is that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided because everybody was doing it anyway, I decided just to shorten it to soup and that's how soup came. And I feel like it, it, it fit because, you know, if you're a little on the old school side, you know, soup up your vehicle, put some rims on it, soup it up, you know, so it made sense, you yeah. know, and I think in Spanish, maybe archaic soup means I know. 
Um, okay. So it, 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 it felt good, you I, know. I, I, I dig that. I dig that. Matter of fact, I think we got some, because um, I understand, man, like you, you, you're passing on your knowledge to the next generation. Right? So you're doing some teaching, right? Absolutely. I think we got some, uh, some pictures we're going to show, and uh, you can tell us what, you know, describe what the pictures are. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll bring those up and Absolutely. take a look. So we got, uh, we got a video, actually. So we got I like yeah. that. I especially like the one black dude with the cowboy hat in there mixed in there, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, Union Mine High School. Yeah, they've had me out there a couple of times, and uh, I think uh, that's that energy, man. Like, you know, YMCA. When did that even come out? Like, 74 or something? Something crazy. <laughs> but like, everyone look, knows it. Everyone knows it. I mean, I do lots of marathons where I DJ at marathons, and I play that, and the runners are trying to be serious. They're trying to run. And I throw that on, and like, bruh. Whoa, 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 tripping. <laughs> yeah, MCA. Okay, cool. I'm out of here, you know. But no, yeah, it's that's energy, man. That's pure feeling. Oh, yeah. we, we we got another picture up here. Yeah, that's um we were doing a uh production, how to make beats. We are doing that uh through the Crocker Art uh Museum. So they had uh brought myself and a saxophonist by the name of Trinity Sharp. Um and we were teaching the youngsters how to uh, listen for different kind of music theory things, how to make beats, you know, the timing. And actually that was a good exercise. Right here, I'm actually doing the DJ class. We had got a grant for that uh, through uh, the Arts uh, of Sacramento. Um, so they sent me a, uh, you know, nice little, you know, uh, nest egg to be able to, you know, get facilitated and do some, um, some teaching right there. We're talking about controllers right here. This is the Guild Theater. Okay. Yeah, right. that's my man, Drew Burks right there. Um, so a lot of times I'll bring the students out to different events. One of my students actually attended the last one that we did, uh, last week. And, um, you know, so this is cool because kind of shows how we you know get the energy of a crowd and you know that's just me doing the radio thing you know i got the uh road pod mic right there and uh you know so that's another thing that we like to teach the kids the different aspects of djing so you see doing a high school you know doing like a theater comedy show you know how to work with the crowd talk to the crowd you know radio um and that's another thing you know working on radio that's another aspect of djing you know right so right. that's what we were talking about earlier there's so many different avenues it's not just it's a lot more than that and i i, I think Originally, like before actually talking to you, I you know I, I never thought about it that way. Usually, I think a DJ. I'm always thinking of uh, thinking of club. Right. Um, and so you know, ha hearing you talk about, listen, you ain't you don't have to just be a club DJ. You can be radio DJ. You yeah. know, they need DJs in all different different uh, you know different fields. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, yeah, man, I just having you bring that up just really you know makes me think about it a lot more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. We're gonna take a quick PSA break and we'll be right back after these messages. Every day amazing with Sky Alton. Hello, my name is Sky Alton, host of Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. Be sure to check it out on Exit Sacramento, and you can also follow me on Instagram at Sky underscore Alton. And check out past episodes of the show on YouTube at Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. See you then. Welcome back to Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. I'm still here with DJ Soup. Um, so before we uh, went to, took a PSA break, man, um, we were talking about you teaching. Um, yeah. What made you want to pass on your knowledge as a, as a DJ? Because, you know, I'm, I, I think it's very important that uh, someone like yourself who really knows their craft shares it, but like what made you want to do it for you? Like, like the motivation yeah, behind the motivation. that. Yeah. You know, one day I was having a moment. I'm not going to lie. I was literally sitting down at my day job 
And I was thinking to myself, you know, I was trying to juggle stuff because there were some clients and it was on my lunch break at the day job and people was asking, oh, can you do this and you do that? And I started thinking to myself, man, I just, you know, booked like three gigs on my lunch break and, you know, finished the rest of the day. And I was like, man, somebody needs to learn how to do that. You know, because I, I, I did, I patted myself on the back, you know, because it was kind of a high stress situation at day job. And I was thinking to myself, you know, it would be an absolute disservice to mm. our community if I did not tell people how I just fandangled this whole situation, <laughs> right? And how I just juggled and sent people to the website and did a proposal here and managed a, another fire over here. And I just thought to myself, you know, I, I need to really tell somebody, you know, I, my best friend, we talk on the phone every day, shout out to Eric. Um, but I just thought to myself, I just gotta teach someone, you know, mm. how all of this kind of goes together. And I've already done a lot of hard work. You know, I mean, I've been homeless for this, mm. man. I used to live in my van. I don't have a lose all of my equipment in storage story. I managed to pay my <laughs> bill, right? <laughs> but, you know, I was living out of my van. I was uh, renting a room after my gigs, maybe one or two days a week. And, you know, there was a friend here, let me stay tonight. Friend there, let me stay tonight and I DJ like a couple times a week and that just kind of covered the rest of my time. And then I went to the gym every day mm. so I could take a shower. <laughs> Dude, I've had to do that before. <laughs> Dude, it was rough, but I just thought to myself like, you know, I've done all of that hard work. I've learned the ins and outs. Mm. I've figured out how to balance the months you make $300 and the months you make $3,000. You know, how do you balance all that out? How do you save? How do you, you know, spread your money out throughout the month? How do you reinvest? And not just be, you know, everybody says sustainability, sustainability. Mm. That's great, but growth, that's what you want to do, you know? And so that's kind of what sparked, you know, these classes. And I just really wanted to make sure that people understood, you know, how that worked. Man, I, I think that's amazing, man. Just, first of all, you have an amazing story. And it's, it's people like you who made me create my show, you know, because mm. I, I, I think for one, like, you're going to inspire a lot of people. I mean, you already are. Like, you're passing on your knowledge and everything trying, like that. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. And, um, but you definitely are. And so, like, to have someone like you who has, you know, basically had idea and followed through with it and created something and, and really got good at it, right? Um, this is what my show is all about, man, highlighting people like you. So I want to thank you again for, for coming on my show and, and really sharing your story. But before we leave, yeah. I got this thing that I'm trying out now. You know, it's a new thing. Okay. I want you to pull a card, any card, and I want you to just answer that question uh, briefly. You know, not, not, you know, super long, but just, you know, just... just Let me answer grab what, something yeah, out yeah, the just middle. Answer that question. Okay, let me grab this one right here. Do I got one card? All right, I got three. I got one? Got one. All, All right. right. Answer this question. Do you reading it or I read it? You read it, you read it. All right. Let's make sure my glasses are going right. <laughs> What's your favorite story about one of your grandparents? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so I have a I have some roots. I have some roots out here. So and I'm gonna talk about my great greats. Okay. My great great grandfather was a, a white French Canadian. My great great grandmother was a Black Hawk Indian, right? So they got together and they tried to book passage on the Donner Party. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to book passage on the Donner Party to come out here to the West Coast. And they were like, no, 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 you a mixed heritage, you know, he's white, you're, we don't know what you are. You, you know, you, <laughs> so they followed behind them. And they came through the Donner Pass, and everybody knows what happened with the Donner Party, and they started chomping each other up. Right. My parents, my grandparents, great greats came through and saw the results, and they were like, whoo, you know, dodged the bullet on that one, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So they kind of rummaged through stuff, as did other people that were traveling behind, uh, and went to Frisco and Sacramento, man, it went down. Wow. Yeah. That, 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 that's, that's, that's quite a story. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> I wasn't that's expecting my, that, man. Yeah, that's a deep story, and I'm very proud that they made it. <laughs> All right, man. I, well, thank you again for coming on the show. Um, 
Thank you to my, my fans you. and my audience out there. This has been another episode of Everyday Amazing. And once again, uh, you can find the episodes at uh, Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton on YouTube. Go follow me on Instagram at Sky underscore Alton. And you can check out, of course, the show at, on, at, on Access Sacramento. So until next time, I'll see you then. Everyday Amazing. Everyday Amazing. Every day amazing. Well, Sky Alton. Every day amazing. Every day amazing. Well, Sky Alton. Every day amazing. Every day amazing. Well, Sky Alton. What's going on? This is DJ Soup, and you are watching Everyday Amazing with Sky Alton. You can find me everywhere at DJ S-U-P-E. The website, that's the hub of everything, djsoup.com. And for the community, don't forget djs2work.org. If you want to learn how to be a DJ, I'm going to show you how. At Finn